This is the story of White Sands National Park. What was once an Ice Age lake teeming with life now exists as a pristine white expanse that appears untouched. So what makes the transformation of White Sands so special? How did it become a world-renowned marvel famous for its rarity and its majesty? And is it really as devoid of life as it appears? The answers to these questions just might surprise you. What if you could see into the Earth's future? Our planet is constantly changing, and with enough time, the things we see when we look outside our windows will one day be completely different. So imagine, you're walking along a lakeside 13,000 years ago. The lake's cool water laps at the shore and mud squishes between your toes. A huge mammoth rests at the opposite side of the lake in front of you. He stoops to take a drink. You blink your eyes and slowly the world around you begins to change. The lake dries up, the mammoth rises to walk and disappears into the horizon, and the mud beneath your feet turns to sand. The next time you open your eyes, you are standing in the center of what looks like a different planet. Hmm. Pristine white sand extends in front of you for miles, and the only thing you recognize in this foreign land is your own footprint behind you. To understand how White Sands came to be, we first need to take a trip back in time to 280 million years ago. Only to do this, we can no longer be a human, what? but need to be a fish. Because at this point in time, the land of White Sands was entirely submerged in water. So you're welcome for this plot twist, because if you were a human visiting at this time, you'd be having a pretty bad day. Anyway, as the waves from the greater surrounding oceans washed over this area, they brought with them the mineral gypsum. Eventually, the sea dried up and left the gypsum behind. So maybe being a fish isn't the answer right now either? I don't know. Now, gypsum is very pretty and it is super versatile, but it's actually not rare at all. We use it in tons of things, all the way from agriculture to plaster in our walls to even our toothpaste. So why is it important in White Sands? What makes White Sands so special is how the gypsum exists there. You see, gypsum dissolves in water, just like salt does, and that makes it really easy for it to get washed away into our rivers and our oceans. So usually it either exists dissolved in water, like in our oceans and lakes, or underground where it's protected from rain and flooding so that it can remain solid. But why didn't one of these two things happen to the gypsum that exists in white sands? How was it able to remain above ground in these beautiful white sand dunes? Hang on, because we are getting there. Next, we go to around 70 million years ago when the Earth's tectonic plates had some massive movements and collisions. These were the same movements that triggered the Rocky Mountains to form. And over here in New Mexico, we had mountains begin to form as well. And these mountains were absolutely loaded up with that gypsum that the ocean had brought over. But then something really interesting happened. The plates began to pull apart. 30 million years ago, this New Mexico mountain range pulled apart so hard that it split into two. It was then that the mountain ranges we know today were formed, the Western San Andres Mountains and the Eastern Sacramento Mountains. But it didn't stop there. The mountain ranges continued to be pulled apart until the ground beneath them dropped out thousands of feet. This dropout formed the Tularosa Basin, which is an essential component to the existence of White Sands. And this basin collected water over time, as basins often do. And about two million years ago, it became a lake known as Lake Otero. And this was the lake that we were walking along at the very beginning of this video. Now, Lake Otero was around for a casual few million years, but its most critical time was around 13,000 years ago during the very end of the last ice age. You see, the ice age was cold and wet. I mean, Obviously, yeah, duh, right? But this meant that there was a lot of snow on these mountains. So as things started to warm up again and the snow melted, it ran down the mountains. And also because it was warmer, it stopped snowing as much and started raining instead. And this water also ran down the mountains. And why is this all important? Because all this water carried the gypsum that was in the stones of the mountains down into Lake Otero. Or in other words, it carried them right down into the basin. Fast forward just a little more and things continued to heat up and dry out. Eventually, Lake Otero evaporated into a thing of the past, but it left behind all of this gypsum that had been dissolved in its water. Now, fortunately for us, Lake Otero didn't dry up entirely because there are still parts of it that hold water today. 
White Sands is actually full of groundwater, and you can find it as little as about one foot below the surface. And this groundwater is so, so important because it keeps the dunes from blowing away. It acts as a kind of anchor or glue that keeps the sand mounted to the ground. In case anyone's wondering what that weird shape is, it's my plant. Oh wait, no it's not, what the f is that? I'm so proud, look how much he's grown. I'm so proud of him. The world may never know. In addition to the groundwater, there's also an area of the ancient Lake Otero that still functions as a lake today. We call this Lake Lucero, and while it's not always full of water, it does fill up periodically. And when it does, a lot of this water is run off from the mountains carrying gypsum in the exact same way that it did thousands of years ago. In this way, the dunes are able to replenish themselves. Now, something I found super cool about White Sands today is that there's actually a ton of life there. The park is home to many plants and animals who have adapted to survive in its unique, challenging environment. The animals in particular are pretty awesome, because over thousands of years of evolution, many have turned their coats white to match the dunes and camouflage better. But if you travel just a few miles outside the park, you'll find these same animals, but with darker coats. That's pretty neat, isn't it? For White Sands to form, we needed the perfect storm of events. And after visiting this place a couple times, I can honestly say that it is one of the most unique places I have ever been. It has this almost magical feel to it that has kept it in a very special place in my heart. If you like this video, please go ahead and leave a like on it. I would really appreciate it. It helps the video out and this is a new channel. So helping promote these videos and those little steps really makes a big difference. Also, if you wanna learn more about geology, the national parks, white sands, cause I'm planning on making more videos about that, or just have some fun with nature and science, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so that I can see you back here real soon.